Well, Tony, thanks for doing this. Uh, probably for you, hard to believe that this is Major League Baseball season number eight. Yeah. Does 2016 <laughs> with the Astros, does it, does it feel like just yesterday? And how do you think you've changed over all these years? Yeah, honestly, I think the years have flown by, but learned a lot about myself. And, uh, you know, I still remember getting called up to the big leagues and, you know, being on that team with Altuve and George Springer and uh, Jason Castro and Lance McCullers, Carlos Correa, you know. Okay, we're in Oakland. We don't need to hear all <laughs> <laughs> Okay, enough. Enough names. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But that's how you broke in. And it was, yeah. it was a special way to break in. And uh, a year later, you were part of a World Series champion team. So. Yeah, so learned a lot. Uh, I just feel like, you know, this being my third team, you kind of realize that uh, it's hard. Yeah. Uh, especially, you know, it's one thing to crack into the big leagues. It's another thing to stay. So uh, obviously very fortunate to be here in Oakland and, uh, I think we have a great group. Born on Halloween 1991, <laughs> which makes me feel old because I think I've got photos of me that year. But you also <laughs> never get to just have your birthday. Your birthday always has to be everybody else's holiday. Yeah. you have any thoughts on that? I know you don't no, know any different. No, What's that like? I think, it's, I think it's awesome because I feel like my birthday is a celebration for everyone. <laughs> and so It's uh, a costume party for your birthday. It's a costume party all the time. My wife... <laughs> Uh, Michelle, she threw an awesome uh, golden birthday, so 31 on the oh, 31st. Uh, okay. she, she set up a big, a big party, had a gathering of 60 or so people, and uh, yeah, I feel like, especially in college, I feel like Halloween was fun, so we had a good time. Growing up, you were a, a child of, of three, two yeah. other siblings, mm -hmm. and your brother Corey, yeah. he actually got to professional baseball yep. for a brief time. Yep. Uh, what, Brewers, Brewers. Clubs? Just, Brewers, just Brewers. Brewers, okay. Yeah, yeah. What was childhood like, uh, and, and where did you fall age-wise? Yeah, so <clears throat> I was the youngest, and my sister's nine years older than me. My brother's six years older than me. Okay. And so, you know, there's big age there's gap, gap there, you know. Yeah. So uh, you had to keep I, up and catch up. I a was lot, the youngest, huh? and but you know what? I still credit my brother to this day. Uh, Corey was a tremendous help, and who. I became as a baseball player, just teaching me the games of basketball, baseball, mm -hmm. football, and always wanted to be like your older brother, right? So I was always his shadow. And I still thank him to this day for teaching me the game. And he had me in the backyard. We were talking about this story a month or so ago. And just being able to just be out there and him just throw me the ball and understand that I wasn't a righty. So we figured that out. <laughs> we figured that out early. He, he was yelling inside, Dad, I don't think he, he's going to make it in this game. And, this ain't it. and then he was like, just try lefty. I don't know, because he was a righty. And so turned me over lefty, and I smashed the first ball that he threw me. And there we go. Why do lefties always have a smoother swing? I don't know. And I feel like in basketball, a left-hander shot yeah. just looks better. I think it's just it's, – it's, more natural. Like you, when, when you've hit like. home runs, your swing like yeah. it just feels like effortless it, yeah. or something. Yeah. I and mean, he right has to like put all their it muscle looks, in it. It looks, like, it looks yeah. a lot different. Like I, you know, obviously King Griffey has a, one of the most beautiful swings Absolutely. Um, of all time. Well, it's like a logo and an icon, you know? Exactly. Right? His, his silhouette is a logo. Exactly. So yeah, lefties just have it better. Okay. In high school, mm -hmm. you're on varsity football and baseball each for all four years, right? Yeah. So... I guess I'm asking this weirdly. Yeah, no. Why didn't you ever go roll with football? What yeah. position did you play? So I was a running back. Okay. Uh, then I was a slot receiver. Okay. Then on defense, I was a cornerback. Of course, you had to play. Yeah, go both I was ways. on both okay. sides. Right. And then I was a safety, kick return and punt return. So a I was, lot of running I out was there. on the field. <laughs> I was on the field a lot. Uh, I just feel like once I got into my junior, senior year, it was... I knew I wasn't going to go to the NFL okay. or, you know, I kind of looked at what I... You knew where your chance was. I was sizing was. myself up, right? Got it, okay. Knew I wasn't going to the NBA either, uh, but... Well, hey, we're going to talk height later on. <laughs> anyway, In you know, a very complimentary way, we yeah, got to talk No height. doubt, we okay. can talk about whatever. <laughs> so, uh, once I got my scholarship to Vanderbilt and signed, I wasn't going to go back my senior year and play and talking with Coach Corbin, he said that he didn't want me to have any regrets and he was going to still honor my scholarship even if I did get hurt. So That's great. let me still go out and play with the same friends that I played with when I was in fourth grade, the guys that I came up with in, in uh, Pee Wee football. And uh, it was a blessing. I had a great year. Our team wasn't that good, but it was all about just playing with the guys for one last time. And I did get one offer to go play uh, at Memphis to play football and baseball, but I just, I think that Vanderbilt was the way to go. All right, speaking of Vanderbilt, um, 
I pulled your bio here from the media guide, uh, like the, uh, 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 the personal uh, uh. section where you got yeah. to showcase a little bit here. here. So go. I'm going to read this. You tell me what still applies here. Okay. Favorite athletes, Curtis Granderson. I mean, we're dating ourselves here a little bit. That's okay. And Ronaldinho. Yeah. If you're a soccer guy, we could touch on that. Okay. Uh, your favorite movies were The Sandlot and Remember the Titans. Favorite TV shows were Lie to Me and mm. 30 for 30 on ESPN. Favorite actors were Denzel and DiCaprio. I like those two. That's a All good right. One. You like Not- steak, loaded potatoes, and carrots as a meal. You like Drake as a musician. Lucky Charms were your favorite late night snack. They're magic. <laughs> they are magically they delicious. delicious. I gotta tell you. Okay. And you like to sleep and play video games in your spare time. <laughs> are you any of those things, Steph? <laughs> I would say I'm going to get back into video games more. It's hard when you have a kid. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, sleep is still one of my favorite things to do. Even more so Lucky now. Lucky Charms probably. is still my favorite cereal. Oh, yeah. Drake is still up there. Yeah. I'll have to say, yeah, Curtis Granderson. You haven't changed a lot. I haven't changed too much. Okay. I don't think so. You <laughs> seem very connected to Vanderbilt still. And I know in the off season, what, you still go yeah. work out and train there? Yeah. Was it just your experience that just like still connects you to that? Is it the people? Is it the location? Some people, they, they go to college, they move on. It just seems like you still have something for Vanderbilt. Yeah, I just, and I was talking to J.J. Blade about this, is, you know, he even admitted to wanting to come back to Vanderbilt, but he wanted to see what Florida had to offer, and then he went to go back to Vanderbilt for a couple of days just to train, and he missed the place. Yeah. And honestly, I kind of felt like this going into, you know, I've done this since 2013 in the off seasons, and I feel like, when you go back to a place that's so familiar and you've had so much success, it kind of gives you a whole different attitude toward what work you're putting in in the off season. And for Coach Corbin to open up the place, I mean, it's such a such a smart idea. Have a pro locker room. And when I was 18, 19 years old, watching uh, guys like Pedro Alvarez come back, Ryan Flaherty come back, Sonny Gray come back, yeah. and you know all those guys who had had success at college who went to the pro ranks and now come back to still train at Vanderbilt, that's what I wanted to be about. And now you see the guys who are starting to trickle in and come back. It's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's a brotherhood. Now I'd say you met your wife, Michelle in college, but that's not true. I'd and say nice. you met her in high school, but I don't think that's true. Yeah, that's right. Middle school, middle school. That's, that's right. A lot of, that's a lot of twists and turns yeah. for any two people in their life. I know. But a, but a, eventually a husband and wife, uh, you, you both go way back, huh? Yeah, we go back. I, so we did date. I don't know if that's even a real thing when you're 13. But Can't even drive a car yet. Yeah, yeah. Your parents drive up to the movie theater. Uh, you got dropped off. So our first date was the Incredibles movie. Was, wow. Yeah, the, that's when the Incredibles. You remember that. The, I mean, of course you yeah, remember that. The, but. the Incredibles. Wow. The Incredibles was in theaters. The first one. <laughs> yeah, think, yeah, so. Yeah. You can peg the year, exactly. Exactly. Isn't that amazing, though, that, I mean, you know, relationships are yeah. hard as they are in the yeah. first place uh, right. but the fact that you have both been through so much i mean different stages of your life together uh, probably speaks to how well connected you are yeah i think that we're very connected we got to see each other grow up yes and i feel like that's a big deal because i know her family in and out she knows my family in yeah. and out and you know a lot of the times we don't need to even speak yeah. on a certain situation because we know how each other is going to feel and you know, now raising, you know how it is, raising kids yep. and understanding what it's like to be a parent. And, you know, we've known each other since we were 12, 13 years old. Yep. So uh, now being 31 years old, we kind of, I, I don't want to say it's easier, but I want to say uh, the, the path has been not as difficult as I would say if we met later on in life, just because we've known each other for such a long time. It's just amazing. People change, people yeah. grow, they mature, and some grow apart, some grow differently. You're obviously yeah. a much different person than when you were 13. So 100%. the fact that you are both different, but you're both still together, 100%. Is very special. Yeah, I agree. You mentioned being a dad. I know that's <laughs> still relatively new to yeah. you in your life. Yeah. A couple years you've been at that uh, <laughs> game along with Michelle. Um, <laughs> You know, we talked about changing as a big leaguer. How about changing as a person after being a dad? Yeah, so it's big time. I feel like you just see the world differently once you've become a parent. And, you know, having McKenna as my daughter, she's just, you know, she just brights up my day every yeah. time I see her. And, you know, parenting is, is challenging, especially when you're, they want one thing and you're trying to teach them in a way that... Right ask the right way oh i know hey you know so like and especially she's only 14 months so right, right. that's hard to kind of uh get her to understand that but 
balancing, I feel like, especially all the things that I went through, especially in that first half last year, which was just such a rough first half, mm -hmm. I was learning how to become a dad as well. And I feel, like, I feel like it took some time to understand what it took to have that time at home to be a dad, but also sacrifice that time of when I need to focus on the season. So yep. um, once I was able to juggle that and then turn it into the second half, and then understand how to juggle those things, I feel like it was, I was much better off. Baseball hat when you go to work? Yeah. Dad hat when you're at home? I, yeah, so it was- I can relate, a lot of people can relate to right, that. Right, so. You had the photo with Mike Yastrzemski. Yeah. I think from last season, yeah. both holding up the kids. The ruffle butts. And you and Mike also go way yeah. back. And oh, the, yeah. what, a, what a coincidence, You're roommates, right? At roommates, yeah. We, and you yeah. both make it to the show. I mean, yeah. is that, like, I'm getting goosebumps it's, thinking yeah, no, about Yeah, no, I that. always do. We, uh, and we live five minutes from each other in Nashville, and we actually went to dinner last night, uh, got some sushi at Nobu with uh, Kurt Casale mm -hmm. and uh, Alex Wood. So, uh, you know, Kurt's a veiny guy. And I don't was, like all this giant stuff. But, yeah, but, yeah. Okay, I know, right, but you I, go way back. But I we, get it. But we go way back. So <laughs> just being able to talk to Yaz, yeah. and uh, I think the coolest thing is, you know, his journey had been hard, too. Yeah. And just to see the type of player that he's turned himself into is, is awesome.